Today I'm working on this chicory flower that I found on the side of the road in South Dakota. Chicory is actually what is used for coffee or su coffee substitute in the South, so I was surprised to see it here. Um, I generally do my compositions on the computer, so these are cutouts of different photographs. Like you can see this one here is this part here. And this was another one that I took and uh, enlarged it. I really loved the way this center is. This is actually the size of the chicory flower. Um, and I'll show you in a minute what size I'm making here. I noticed that in here there's a lot of sort of, it looks like glitter in a way. You know, a lot of tiny little catch lights from the sun just sort of glistening. So in order to handle that, I've decided that I'm going to use um, some drawing gum and a toothbrush. And now this toothbrush, I actually um, bent it with a hairdryer so that I could hold it so that it would be flat to the paper. Next, I use this Pebeo drawing gum, pour some in the top, put the thing down there, and then just spray it like this. So I have those little sprays all over this fl uh, flower. A couple of little mistakes over here, and I can just take that off after it's dried. As I said earlier, this is the size of the flower. It's about two inches at the most. So this is the right side of the painting so far. And this, the background is kind of fun for me because it's all just splashes of color. There's salt in here and then splashes of water in there as well. So I'll just keep going on this. I like to use these little roses. Uh, this is a Richeson rose, which I just love. So I can mark what's in there. And um, I'm just basically using Holbein Lavender uh, Winsor Newton Ultramarine uh, Blue, uh, Winsor Newton Cobalt. This is Daniel Smith's Undersea Green, which I really love for the super darks. Pretty easy to get there. Then um, this is um, Daniel Smith's Sap Green, much better than the Schminky, which I have written there. Huh. And then I basically have a lot of these greens, um, so I don't have to go searching for the variety. This is Skip's Green from um, American Journey. Love that. This is Coors Green Gold. Wonderful. I'm not always in love with Da Vinci Thalo Green. Um, it makes great mixes, but if you're using it directly from the tube, it's just a little bit bright. All right. Most of the time I'm using this wonderful silver black velvet um, oval. It's three quarter inch and it's just perfect for wetting down this size um, painting. This is an Escoda Perla Synthetico. I love it because it really holds a point. And then this one is a Kolinsky from Isabi. It's a number seven and um, I never thought I'd be using anything like this, and this is a great brush. I use freezer paper, kitchen freezer paper, to keep the rest of my painting clean, just from drips and so forth. And um, I'm going to show you just one little petal. There's kind of a nice little technique I use that has to do with timing of drying of the water. I thought you might like to see that. What's nice about the freezer paper is I can put the water and the paint right on top of this large painting and not worry about it coming um, down onto the painting and ruining it. So I'm just going to use this large, this is actually only a three quarter inch, and I am wetting the entire petal to start. So this process is just about wetting, waiting, 
and lifting. Um, when I get to the edges, I'll probably soften some of this edge just because hard and soft lines are a lot more attractive. And also then I use the light to make sure that um, I haven't missed any spots here with the water. I've already uh, used masking fluid to keep the whites and I do use a lot of gouache in case I blow it. Okay, so now I'm going to let that dry just a little bit while I'm using, this time I'm going to use this Synthetico because I don't want a lot of paint on my brush. So um, this Holbein Lavender is really a nice paint. And I noticed that there is, this is light, then there's a, sort of a light crossover here and light down here. So i um, got to preserve those because if I don't, it's, even the gouache doesn't save it that much. So this is my first pass through here and it might be just a little bit too dark. That's okay because I can save that. And I wanted to keep a light thing going through here. So let's lift some of this. My other favorite tool is a paper towel. And just as it um, whoop, as it dries, it'll hold these lines more. Now notice if I lift this brush up, it puts a puddle there. So you usually start from where you don't want the puddle to, to be. Now let me see here. Looks like there's a lot more dark in here, so I can add to that. And this will dry quite light. So I'll come back in with some um, ultramarine, just ever so slightly have some of these lines coming in here. And because it's right at the right temperature, uh, right dryness, except, oops, that's a little bit too much there. Get rid of that. Um, it dissipates a little bit. And then as it continues to dry, I can continue to work on it with this nice little pointy brush. And as it dries, the lines get um, sharper and sharper. Isn't that cool? So I can almost do this whole petal in one pass. It makes my life a lot easier. So let's see. And if you have a little shaky arm there, that's even better. All right. On this petal, I noticed that these little guys here are casting a shadow on the petals. And those are actually what I think are the charm of the painting. So I'm going to be sure that I have that properly painted. And I'll paint it first because even if I go over it later, it just softens the line, which is perfect for um, for a watercolor shadow. Coming up here. It's a little awkward the way that is, but I think it'll still work out. And while I'm here, This one comes way up here, way up here. All right, let's paint that. And then this is a really nice dark blue, which I'll do with ultramarine blue as well as that one. After wetting the papers thoroughly, in the areas where I'm going to do the background, I usually use a really small brush 
especially if the background is supposed to have a lot of variation in color. Um, I will intensify the paint in some areas and make it real thin. And the other thing that I do is I use several brushes that are completely loaded with different pigments. And the reason that I do that is so that I don't have to go back and load a brush, which takes time. Um, this fixes it so that I have more time on a wet piece of paper. Later on, I'll put salt on and splash water onto the background as well. While this is still wet, I will put acrylic ink on the edges so that, and they will diffuse and it'll look like little tiny filaments. You can do this with gouache too. So if you're doing just, uh, if it's for watercolor only and you can't use acrylic, gouache is a great alternative. This is a little bit more opaque. So I think I have completed the painting, but I'm not absolutely sure. So I'll just tack it up on the wall for a couple of days and see if there's anything I think it needs. Um, is there enough interest? Is the path of light interesting enough? And do I have the darks right? So forth and so on. <laughs>